Okay, so we're going to be answering the age-old question. How close together can you really plant two trees? Specifically, two tropical fruiting trees. Right here I got an avocado and a mango. And I started these both from seed in the same container with a few other uh, avocado and mango seeds. I was able to pull out the other ones, but these two were, the roots were intertwined. I don't know how to just keep these together. There's some mulch on here, as you can see. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but... The, uh... The mango and avocado were grown from seed there, only 10 months old. I kept them in a pot until now, I recently put them in the ground. I'm mulching them. Uh, this mulch we got locally. This is a good way to have an organic fertilizer locally sourced it's just a uh, saw pomelo which is going to add some silica to our soil it's got some pine which will make our soil a little more acidic and then some oak which will alkalize your soil and this kind of stuff is just great because it helps retain moisture it's going to act as a slow release organic fertilizer i'm going to keep these plants happy let's look how thin the stem is on this mango it's like thinner than my finger this was grown from seed from a grocery store mango it's looking good that in the ground and the beautiful foliage on this avocado here same thing really thin grown from seed and it's under this oak here we got a little microclimate for it under a few oaks and there's another pine and when you're growing seedlings they like a more shady location as they get older they'll grow into the sun you can see these things are doing well i kind of want to make this as a test to see how close you can grow these things together kind of for the backyard gardener to prove uh, anyone can grow fruit trees. Now I'm out in zone B, we're in central Florida, our soil is like sand. So I'm going to be talking about organic fertilizer too, that's why we're using the mulch. And at the end of the video I got another way to use organic fertilizer, something that may not be for everyone, but if you have the opportunity to use it, it's definitely going to help. But check out this other avocado I grew. This is another one we just got in the ground from seed. And this is pretty far away from our house, so what we're gonna do is just water these once or twice with a five gallon bucket, and that's gonna act as our uh, water. After that, we're gonna kinda just let them sit there, and if they make it, they make it. If they don't, they don't. You can see this one's got a much thicker stem. I think this one's about two months older, it's about a year old, and some of the leaves were dying. It was in a really small container. I'm gonna top it there. I think this one needs a, I should top this avocado about now. It's about to be spring. It's February right now, February 17th of 2022. And see the pond over there, that's what we're gonna use to water it. And that's for multiple reasons. That's gonna have algae in it, it's gonna have fish poop in it, all kind of critters in there to poop. And that's gonna act as a um, faster fertilizer than the slow release mulch. So look at the foliage on the mango. The mangoes are so beautiful to grow. Let's go check out the pond. So having a pond near your property is like a huge benefit. You get all kinds of stuff, but for gardening specifically, if you want to water with your pond, it's like free fertilizer pretty much. You can water and fertilizer at the same time. Here's an ice cream bean we had planted. This didn't make it through the freeze. We were forecasted to get down to 29. I don't know if it got that cold, but we had another ice cream bean on the property that uh, looked like that and then came back. So I'm waiting to see on that one if it, if it comes back. Check out the pond over here. We got the cows across there. I don't know if you can see them. Another great free fertilizer. But we're going to water with the pond because of what's in it. And it's this green algae. This stuff is just full of nitrogen. I'm sure it's got like trace minerals. All kinds of good stuff for the plants. I've been watering the garden with this and some of our other fruit trees and they seem to love it. I think this is called like aquaponics using the fish poop to uh, fertilize your trees. You can see even the grass is greener by the pond. Nothing froze by the pond because the water keeps it warmer. It's pretty cool. But back to this avocado and this mango. So I want to do this as a test to see how close you can grow tropical fruit. Another cool thing about doing this with mangoes and avocados is they're more likely to be true to seed, which 
which means it's going to be like the parent plant. Whereas if you do this with an apple, you may not end up at, like you might not get with the same apple as you uh, eat. You know what I mean? You can end up with a really small apple that's not very juicy or tasty. I hear that's pretty common with apples. But I guess mangoes and avocados are supposed to be pretty good. And these, I'm gonna try to leave them ungrafted. Uh, usually fruit trees get grafted, which is really weird. When I first learned about that, I thought it was strange. They uh, cut them. Here's a pineapple I wanna show, or a little pine cone. I wanna show how small these trees are. Let's see, for reference, they're smaller than one pine cone now. So they're about 10 months old, pretty small. But the grafted and ungrafted trees, I think it's really interesting. Some trees are not grafted. Usually like uh, papayas are usually grown from seed. But a, lot of, a lot of trees are grafted because you get a better fruit that way. You're certain of the fruit you're gonna get. And I just think that's so weird. I feel like you're just grafting all these same trees together. You're gonna end up with more disease and stuff. But that's kind of something we saw with the citrus screening situation in Florida. But, so this mulch is gonna be good because it's gonna help retain water like I said, I'm going to water these probably once, and then that's going to be it. And we're growing these organically, just for multiple reasons. It's supposedly healthier. I, in my experience, you get way better quality uh, fruits and vegetables when you grow stuff organically. The only thing about growing stuff organic is you need to have mulch. You need to have like a consistent supply of mulch and compost, and that can be tricky. So I get why people do the... Synthetic fertilizers, I I don't think it's very smart though. I think you're just making your soil worse. If anything, just go go organic from the start, and then you start seeing like your benefits compound on top of each other. But the avocado's got beautiful growth, and the new growth is really nice to watch come in. The fun thing is you can start these plants inside and just watch them grow on your windowsill, and uh, it's pretty cool to watch them grow. Give you like a something fun to talk about with your friends. Add a little free oxygen to the home. And then maybe go plant outside if you're feeling brave. But that pond is going to add a lot of benefits. And this mulch is going to add a lot of benefits. And that's going to pretty much be our source of organic fertilizer and moisture. So that's it today. Thank you for watching and checking out on these beautiful plants. I'm going to do an update. I'm going to try to update these uh, every year and kind of let you know how things are going. So stay tuned for that. Cheers.